Great YouTube, speak my like further do retro. Um it's gonna be a bit of a big one this. Um it's gonna have the eBay pickups and the pickups from uh Bristol Gaming Market. Cheers. Right, uh first of all we'll start off with some eBay pickups. So first game I've got um, I do intend to get this boxed uh, at some point because I've got the other two boxed, uh, classic, absolute classic Game Boy games. But um, I just picked this one up just so I can have a go and play it, So, which is um, Double Dragon 3 on the Game Boy. Uh, I was actually playing this game on the Amiga last night, actually. It's absolutely rubbish on the Amiga, so I'm hoping it's a completely different game on the Game Boy. Um, but uh, it's the only Double Dragon I haven't played on the Game Boy. Double Dragon Double Dragon 2 on the Game Boy are great. So, uh, yeah, I was happy to get that. Um, about six or seven quid uh, unboxed, so really chuffed to get that. That was a, a game I've been after for a while. Box is like sort of like 30 quid, I think, maybe upwards, 30 to 45, I think. So um, it's one I'm on the lookout for, but I want to get it at the right price. So um, Next up is some Mega Drive games, Mega Drive shooters. Um, game been after for a while. Um, which is Arrow Flash. Um, this looks like a really cool Mega Drive shooter. I haven't played it yet, um, but it looks really good. Looks really, really cool. Sort of cool music and everything. Nice clean condition. Uh, unfortunately, doesn't have a manual, but um, I picked this up for about uh, twenty pounds, I think. So that's quite a good price for this because it usually goes for about, um, I would say. 30 to 40 um with manual um it could sort of 40 pounds upwards um cex say that they sold this for a tenner box but um there's no, none in stock so i mean if they did sell this for a tenner box you could put it on ebay straight away for 20 plus because it usually, usually it's around 30 so to get this for 20 pounds arrow flash i was really really pleased so but um it's a bit of a, a bit of a strange one now so Obviously, I'd, I'd uh, ordered that one, um, and I also ended up winning Arrow Flash, the Japanese version. So um, I actually got this for a bit cheaper, actually. I think this was £10 plus delivery. Again, no manual. Um, okay condition, honest condition. You know, uh, see it's got some age and wear and all that, so you are, uh, you know, that's pretty legit. So, but... Um, yeah, I'll probably end up keeping the Japanese version. Um and possibly selling on the uh the English version, so but I prefer for once I actually prefer the English cover art. So what do you think? Um and it's also got different screenshots on the back, so that's the uh, the Japanese version. You can see that. And there's the English version. But I think the English cover art is pretty cool on that one, to be honest. So uh, let us know what you think in the comments. So, But yeah, so we've definitely got Arrow Flash to play. So like I say, we'll probably sell one of those going on going forward. Uh, another one I managed to pick up. Um, I've been after a game for a little while. Uh, it's another Mega Drive shooter. Um, one of the older shooters, I believe, on this one, which is uh, Hellfire. Um, and I believe we've got this for between 15 and 20 pounds, I think, which is quite a good price for this complete. So, hang tabs all there. I haven't seen the game before. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I think it's a bit more of a basic shooter on a Mega Drive, but um, it's all complete. Everything's there. So, 15 to 20 pounds. That's pretty good because this is another one that does seem to be going up. So, I remember this used to be like a 10 pound game, and now it's like. 20 to 25 i would say so to get it for 15 to 20 you know especially complete is quite good um now uh game uh i've never owned on the saturn actually i've had it on the uh playstation but it is um loaded on the sega saturn uh i don't know if i overpaid on this one i've just seen it and put a, a cheeky bid in so um but i think i've got this for around 10 pounds so I thought, you know, it's, it'd be good to have. Uh, I haven't had it before. Um, I actually am after it on PlayStation, but I'm getting to the point now to thinking, do I need stuff on multiple systems or, or do I just get it on one system and then, uh, you know, enjoy it and uh, play it on one system, whatever's the best to play it on. So, 
but that's sort of the, the sort of thinking when you sort of uh, you're at a situation where space is of a premium you have to sort of think of ways of saving space and uh how to maximize the, the best out of your collection so uh, <laughs> certainly something I, i'm uh I'm thinking about the sort of uh, thinning down because on some games I've got them on three or four systems. It's pointless, really. You know, just go with the one which is the best, whatever one's nostalgic to you, and stick with that one, isn't it? So, right. So next up, it wouldn't be a without further ado <laughs> video because video like some uh, big box Amiga. So, well, I will start off with a, a, a disc. So this is just Gauntlet uh, Gauntlet uh, Two on the uh, obviously on the Amiga. I haven't opened it. It's just to go in, um, basically, one of my collections, uh, the Giants collection. Um, Sidney Steve was missing the Gauntlet 2 from his. So, a nice guy that I am. I said, he he, he can have mine. And uh, I'll just put a, a, another one in, you know, so I'm not that fussed if Gauntlet 2 is Gauntlet 2, isn't it? It doesn't really matter if it says the collection on it, as long as it's original disc. Who cares? <laughs> but Sidney's a bit more, uh, he likes it all proper, doesn't he? So... <laughs> all matching and all, all correct um right another one i've i've got this one uh again i've got another version of this but um my one was water damaged if you remember so i picked this up i think it's about four quid it certainly wasn't over a fiver um which is f1 world champion edition um there is a slight bit of damage there which i didn't sort of really see um in the in the pictures but for four quid it's probably cost them four quid to post it so i'm happy enough with that that'll do me um it's a great little game actually f1 uh, championship don't know what it's like on a mega throw and i do actually own it um but uh on the amiga me and my dad used to play this so pretty cool pretty cool so chuff to get that uh another one um which i thought was pretty cool uh Psygnosis game um, not one I've really seen much before, actually. I think I may have seen one in, in uh, Mr. Bad's collection, um, Paul's collection. But I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I think I paid about 7 to £10 pounds for this. Um, I said to show Cindy Steve when I won it, I said, have you seen this? And he said, oh, I didn't go for that one because of the damage to the box, which me being me, I've just seen the advert, gone for it. And uh, put a cheeky pin in and winning it. But it is a game called Prime Mover. Which I think that that artwork is so cool. And I actually think that this is quite a good game. So um, it looks pretty cool. Um, but the damage that Steve was on about. You see here. Um, it's actually broken here. So, But 5 to £10. Pounds, you know. You stick it on a shelf. Not really going to see it. You know. it's uh, It'll do me. My collection's... Uh, it's got a few rough and readies in there, not the game, but a few few games with a bit of you know a bit of battle battle worn. So you know, but as long as you got it, it's there. It's all cool, isn't it? So game I've never really played before. It looks really cool actually. I don't know if you see that on there. It uh, looks really really cool. So that's Prime Mover by Psygnosis. It's not one you see all the time. That one, or certainly I don't see it. You know, perhaps I'm going around with my eyes shut, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, and one that I'm really chuffed to get. Uh, I've been after this for a while. Uh, Silly Steve always takes a mick out of me and says it's rubbish. Um, but I really think it's a good conversion on the uh, Amiga. I think it's a really great game. Um, and it is Shinobi uh, on the Amiga. Now this um, generally goes on eBay for anything for like 40 to 50 quid. Um, and I think I managed to get this for... Um, 28 or 29 pound delivered which i was really chuffed with it's got the uh the discs in there you know the, the manuals in there everything's in there it's in it's in honest condition it's not it's not a minter it's probably a seven a, a good honest seven i would say um you know it's but it's it's nice nice quality and this one's getting harder to get in the sort of um three quarter box release uh, it's very very cool game for me it's a great game I don't know why they didn't release this on the Mega Drive. I know it was out on the uh, the Master System. It was a good version on the Master System. But I think the Mega Drive could have done an arcade perfect version of this. Especially as the um, 
Mega Drive actual uh, was based on the System 16 board, which that was actually one of the first games that was on that, I, thought, I believe. So, um, right, uh, <laughs> this is where it starts getting expensive. Um, yeah, so at the moment, well, t today, uh, I'm making this video a bit late, to be honest. These are sort of pickups over the last sort of two, two weeks, two, three weeks. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's basically today we're going to Old School's house. Uh, going to have a, a Ruby Murray at Old School's uh, laugh. Uh, Gareth's going to be there. Mark's going to be there. Me and Marcus, Old School. Old School's better laugh. <laughs> and the dog. Uh, so we all have a good good laugh tonight. So it'll be great. It'll be really, really good. Uh, really looking forward to to this. So, uh, And obviously we're going to revive all the following day. And I'm also staying up uh, the, the Saturday as well and, and going on the Sunday as well. But I don't think anyone else is going on the Sunday. So I might have a revival to myself by the sound of it. Um, but uh, nevertheless, um, I'm going for both days. I, 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 need, I've, I like to get away and enjoy these things. And it is the last event that I'm doing this year. Um, so with that in mind, try not to spend money. Um you know, and what one of my passions I'm very, very weak for. You know, I see see new games or games that I'm after uh, for this system, and and, and I've got to have them. I've I've got to have them because you just don't see them come up. So, um, fortunately, but unfortunately, <laughs> we've increased the overdraft again uh, to 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 basically mean that we can do everything, and then we pay it all back next year, really. Um, so yeah, uh, what I saw c come up, it wasn't this one, but I saved the, the the best for last, really, I suppose. So um, these came up, um, and the gentleman basically, the gentleman had the the original one I wanted first, which is what I'll show you last. Um, that was disc only. Uh, it's Spectrum Plus Three, you know, <laughs> you know let the cat in the bag. It's Spectrum Plus Three games. Uh, he had a game I I I've. Basically, I've wanted uh, this is disc only. I've never seen it come up uh, before. I jumped straight on it. I had to have it. Um, absolutely, uh, had to have it. So I paid it thirty quid for the disc only one. So uh, yeah. So I was like, oh, I had that. Then he had other games. These two games here. Um, now these games don't really come up that often either well i've never seen them come up let's put it that way they come up and tape all the time i've never seen them come up for for disc so basically um he wanted for these two games what was it he wanted uh he had it marked up but like they were individually priced but putting the prices together he wanted 160 pounds for these two games uh, I messaged a guy, uh, said I've just bought such and such game off of you, uh, I'm a Spectrum Plus 3 disc collector, I'm interested in the other two games that you have, um, basically um, the price, I didn't say the price, I said they're untested, you know, so um, is there anything you could do on the price, um, I'm definitely interested in them, uh, these will be going to my collection, I'm not buying them to sell, uh, and they, they will get played, like you know. Uh, so from one hundred and sixty uh, pounds, the guy come back and said he'd accept thirty on one and fifty on the other. So I went, "Yep, yeah, saying not a problem, buy them straight away." So these cost me eighty pounds, which is quite expensive. But from one hundred and sixty, of which he was asking, uh, you know, it's half price basically, isn't it? So. Um, so the two games in question, one which was thirty pounds, uh, just got to remove a bit of this trimming. It's got a bit of a label left on the front, but it is Total Recall on the Spectrum Plus Three disc, um, which is a pretty cool game. It's blooming hard, I'll tell you that. And um, this one worked, and it does have a slight damage there, unfortunately. But to get these, you, 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 these you just don't see them. You just, I've never seen this come up. I knew it was available on disc. I've never seen it, you know, never. So I knew, knew it was a latter game. Um, so it's a, it's a good game. Um, it's very hard though. I've not managed to do the first level. But um, yeah, that worked straight out of the box, that one. 
So I put that on and it loaded straight away. I thought, oh great, this this is this is cool, it's a good sign. Um now that was the one which was thirsty. Um so I was chuffed to get that. Um like I say, as you don't see it. This one here um was the one which was fifty. He actually wanted ninety pounds for this before I asked him. So he reduced it to fifty, which I was quite chuffed with. So and this is Robocop 2 uh, on the Spectrum. Um, this is in nicer condition than Total Recall. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty cool game. Like I say, these are real late in the Spectrum's life. So to see these, these about is really... Like I say, I've never seen them before. Not on Spectrum Disc. So really chuffed to get these. Now this one was almost working. <laughs> Out of the box, so the disc there and uh, the instructions. So I put this in, it would load the title screen, it would do the music. Uh, did it load, load title? Yeah, I think it loaded the title screen, did, did the music. Uh, you could define the keys and everything. And as soon as you started the game, it would crash. So, what, what I generally do is I try and load them a few times. Um, and sometimes just by loading them a few times with a bit of dirt on them or whatever, it eventually load or because it hasn't spun for a bit, you know, eventually it'll load. Uh, it was getting better and better, but it still wasn't loading. So um, I actually used uh, my method of uh, what me and Cindy Steve do of uh, cleaning the discs with a, a um, static cloth, uh, anti-static cloth, sorry, and a bit of uh, vinyl cleaner. Uh, which sort of just removes any dirt and gunk and uh you know um you know mould or whatever's on the discs, whatever's they picked up over the last twenty or thirty years. Um and then obviously you've got to let the disc dry out because you know it won't read it with this stuff on it. I'm really you're supposed to give them twenty four hours but you know it dries out pretty quick. Um and put the disc in and <laughs> load it straight away. So really chuffed with that. It loads every time now perfectly. So Robocop two on the spectrum uh and the guy actually uh said to me he said oh he said um basically oh, i've got a spare box for monty python on the plus three i said oh brilliant he said i'll chuck you in that in for free if you want i said yeah uh, that'd be brilliant freebies are always welcome and i said um you never know what i find in my collection so i come across a monty python disc now i i have the uh i have the box so the gentleman was supposed to send me a different game <laughs> and he ended up sending me Rainbow Islands by mistake. Now I already have two copies of Rainbow Islands otherwise I've been pretty chuffed to get hold of this. Uh, tried this out of the box it didn't work um, but upon me giving it a good old clean it's now working. So uh, I've cleaned this so I messaged the guy uh, me messaged him yesterday actually and um, he said oh you know my eyes have got great spec savers I'll post the correct game to you and uh, it should be with you for Saturday well we're on Friday now so he must have posted that last night um, and it's crazy because it's here this morning <laughs> so he posted it last night and it's here this morning um, so when our postal system around here is good it is really good word is bad you know I think sometimes I get short staffed and some stuff doesn't turn up for a couple of days, you know. But if they, if, you know, if they're, they're generally as as a rule, they're really, really good. I haven't tried this yet. I'm pretty well. I'm like ninety percent sure it's going to work. <laughs> I'll be gutted if it doesn't. Uh, and again, I paid twenty nine ninety nine for this, just disc only, and it is New Zealand story on the spectrum. Uh, and if you remember, going back the other the other week or the other month, I actually picked up the. Uh, the case for this on the, the the hope that one day I would find the disc and complete it. So New Zealand story complete touch some wood it'll work and uh, you know that that means we've got a complete New Zealand story which cost me forty pounds to put together. Um New Zealand story for me is one of the best games on the spectrum. Uh you know New Zealand story, Rainbow Islands, blah 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 they're all classics. They're all fantastic. 
But New Zealand Story is a very, very good game. It's got the arcade playability. It has the arcade music. All right, Steve, it doesn't have the arcade colour. <laughs> but everything else is there. You know, it really is a fantastic conversion. I've been after this for a long, long time. Uh, and now I've finally completed it. I've never seen it before. Uh, some Amstrad discs came up and I was like, oh, I was always tempted just to buy them, just to have the three-inch disc of New Zealand Story, uh, you know, but it would have been the Amstrad version. Um, but now I've got the plus three version. never seen it before and I now own it. So that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, right, uh, I suppose next thing is on to the Bristol Retro Gaming Pickups. So, uh, <laughs> Bristol Gaming Market. Basically, yeah, it was a it was a really good day. I wasn't feeling filming very much to be honest. Um, I filmed one piece of footage, uh, which I'll insert here. Right, YouTube, speaking mic without further ado, retro. And we're here again at the Bristol Retro Gaming Market. Uh, it was pretty busy. Um, flip the camera around and give you a show. There's 50% more stallers this year. So there's an increase on sellers. It doesn't seem to be as hectic, but it is constant. And there's Colin <laughs> going through the shot as we speak. <laughs> yeah, so the gaming market was really, really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I wasn't really feel, feeling filming. Um, I was just enjoying the day, to be honest. Um, I got there, and um, basically, it was me and Marcus got there. We parked the car up, uh, walked on in. It was um, pretty, pretty. Uh, it wasn't as hectic and as manic as it was last time. Um, I would say the trade was pretty constant. So, I've got in there. I was sort of having a look around. Um, I was really sort of looking for for D Dainster and Liam. To say hello, like you know, and uh, yeah, it was really so. So, I was going along looking for them, but I was looking on the stalls as well. And um, yeah, there was some really good stuff. Yeah, there was some, there was, there was some really cool stuff there, really good, good, good stuff there. So, it was nice and sort of a bit more relaxed. It was, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't so much full on, like you know, but there was people buying and looking. You could get in, you might have to wait about a little bit to sort of try and get to look at the stall that you wanted to look at. And then I, I, I spotted um, Lewis and Amanda. I went over to say hello to him, and then I got distracted. I think I seen some at the stall, so I didn't sort of go over and speak to them first of all because it was the first people I saw that I knew in there. So uh, I started looking at some stuff on a stall and uh, sort of working my way down. So I like to sort of look around first, see what's what, and then um, then uh, quite far down, I run into um, Dane Sturt and Liam. Uh, said hello to the boys. Uh, always great lads, Dainsey and Liam. Uh, looking up with them this weekend as well at uh, Revival. Uh, always have good, a good laugh when you get 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 together with them boys. Uh, <laughs> Liam was apologising to me for for Blackpool. I said, "Don't apologise to me, mate. You you made my weekend. You know, uh, I made a thick skin, mate. You know, what I mean, he, he he thought he'd been rude to me, but he hadn't. He just he he made my weekend. He, he was so funny. He was he was a uh, He's in a right old two and eight. He, he'd had a few beers, and uh, you know, and he was out out as well. <laughs> so yeah, Liam's a lovely guy. Always such a such a cool guy, and also he's right into the boxing like yourself. He's he's a bit more into the boxing than I am. He's actually he actually goes to a lot more events than I do. So you know, when I listen to his boxing stories, and he's been at ringside and stuff, you know, there's another thing that we share in common. It's absolutely brilliant. So looking forward to seeing them, them guys this weekend. Uh, and then um, uh, um, Dainster's mate, Dain one of Dainster's best friends, was on the stall next to him. A guy that I've heard a lot about, a guy called Ant Harper. Uh, really cool guy. <laughs> I've bought off him before. Um, old school said to me, you bought, you bought your Super Nintendo off him. I said, did I? I have not got a clue. I said, yeah, that's who I got my box um, Street Fighter 2 Super Nintendo off of. So um, I already sort of knew him it, without knowing him, if you know what I mean. So I started chatting to him. I, I'd obviously been... Dropping hints into days that like, I want to get to know this guy, see what he's about, see what he's got on the spectrum and stuff. Um, and 
I spotted something on his stall, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, that was actually the most expensive purchase of the day, but well worth it, definitely. So then uh, over in the corner, I spied my, my friends, the, the um, Retro Dojo. Absolutely brilliant. The Liverpudlian lads, they were there. Absolutely fantastic. Went over, said hello to them, shook the guys' hands. Really, really top gents, these guys. Um, you know, always, always, always get some of my money. They're uh, always, uh, always look after me. Really, really do. And you, you, you'll, you'll see the pickups that they, 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 they've really looked after me. Um, so went over, had a chat with them boys, asked them how they were getting on and everything. Uh, yeah, they were cool. Um, so I'm sort of having a bit of a look round. Uh, come across Rich King Retros, talking about talking to him about the older. Housing situation, how he's getting on, what he was doing. Uh, you know, he's saying he's about, he's not quite where he wants to be. He needs a few extra grand to get the property in the area that he'd like. So I think he's hanging fire, just trying to raise a bit of bunts. And uh, then, then, then he'll, he'll stroke with the irons hot as soon as he's got all the cash that he needs. So um, he's, he's just doing the events and things at the moment, from what I understand. He's got, got a lot of stock, massive stall and all that nowadays. Um, but it's, it'd be nice to see him on the social as well, like you know, because it's not really, really the same. I mean, Rich was one of the first YouTubers I ever met, and uh, he is such a lovely guy. He can no, not spend enough time, you know. He will talk to you, chat to you, um, spend quality time with you. He's a really nice guy, uh, and it's just a bit of a shame he hasn't been out on the social with us for for a little while. Um, because, like I say, it is a, it's not the same without him. He needs to get out of us uh, on some on, on some of these events, you know. But he's doing the sensible thing, isn't he? He's trying to get on the... Uh, well, I think he's on the property ladder, but he's trying to upgrade on the property ladder, isn't he? So, um, yeah, so it's nice to see Rich. And also, we've got some purchases from Rich, and, and he looked after me. So I was walking up and down, and uh, Japanese Alan was there, too. Some Japanese Al. <laughs> you may call him Scottish, but he's Japanese on the inside. Japanese is a state of mind. <laughs> so he was there. So I was having a quick flip through of his stuff. Um, there was some. He had some good stuff, but um, I was having an eye because I didn't really want. I didn't want to spend a lot of money at this event. But you're sort of torn between things, aren't you? You know, it's my local event, like you know what I mean. So it's my local event, so it deserves my local money, doesn't it? You know what I mean. So so you want to spend money there to keep the event thriving and keep the event going. But you also don't want to spend too much because you've got revival the following week. Um, so that was what I was up against. But the sort of my plan of action going actually to, to the event was to get one of those uh, modded Game Boys. Um, when I went to Blackpool, there was a guy doing the modded Game Boys there. Um, but I didn't think they were as nice quality as the guy who was doing them at Bristol the first time around. Um, and he didn't really have ones that were up both of those guys were actually at the Bristol so but the guy he, he, he had them there but they weren't it didn't have some of the real top quality ones he did have some modded um, Game Boy colours with the colour screens which are full look cool and they're apparently a bit of a nightmare to make because I think you've got to do a bit of uh, milling with the plastic cases and all that to get the uh, GBA screens in them but um, they were 160 quid for those. So I thought that was a little bit expensive. I wasn't going to spend that on a Game Boy. Um, you know, but the, the normal ones, the ones that we were looking at originally, were um, £80. And I was like, oh, I really sort of want to get one. I really like a nice condition one. But I've seen a few things by now, like, you know. So I'm looking up and down. I'm looking up and down and, and having a mull about and seeing what's like. And who should come up and get me? It was Mr. Bad's. Uh, Paul, uh, absolutely legend, really really cool. So so now we've got Paul in tow. So me and Paul are having a look around, we're having a chat. We've uh, also seen the guys from Let's Talk Retro, Colin and James, and they're sort of there, and we're all all sort of chatting together. And um, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, so we're all sort of having a look around, a bit of a chat together, a bit of natter, and um, looking around at sort of stuff. And Paul's saying, "Oh, come and have a look at this. You know, well, that's a good price. Well, that's a bit steep. You know, and." Um, tell me a few things that I'd missed and all that so um, yeah so we're all sort of chatting along and having a good time me and Paul went and had a look at a Japanese Alan's stall um, I believe Paul asked him about some uh, uh, 
FM Tang's Marty games. He had a couple, but um, I don't, don't think Paul... They weren't necessarily what Paul was looking for or at the price he was looking for them at. So, uh, but um, Paul got a nice pickup. But there was a, a few things, but the one thing I will say is the prices were really good. There, there was there was some stuff, and uh, we got good prices. You could have bought stuff at this event, and you could have made money on the stuff, selling it, reselling it on eBay anyway. Um, so yeah, so we were sort of a uh, all sort of having a look around, and then. Uh, a guy that I've sort of been in contact f- through, uh, he wants to buy some of my PS2 games off of me. Uh, I've sort of been in contact but a bit back and forth. I've been a bit lazy with getting the listings out, to be honest. So I've sort of got to try and dig the games out and get them out and take pictures and everything. Uh, it's a guy called James as well. A uh, really nice guy. Um, and it's the first time we've actually met up together. So James was there. So it was really nice to say hello to James. If you're watching James, uh, it's really good to meet you. Um I'll get the pictures of those other games to you. We'll we'll work something out, mate. It's not a problem. So it was really nice to meet James. I've, James had a few friends that he's seen in there as well. So we're all sort of having a look about. Um, and yeah, it was really, really, really cool, cool day. So, um, so let's get on to the pickups, I suppose. <laughs> right. So um, the first, these first pickups are I bought off Rich King Retro. Um, I don't. This game's not very good. I don't remember. James. I remember James from Let's Talk Retro said this game used to give him nightmares, and the film used to give him nightmares, um, which is Nightbreed on the Amiga. Now this was a packing title for one of the um, the Amiga packs, but um, this is the full price release, which is a cardboard box, which I've not really seen before. I think I've seen it in Mister Bads's collection, but I've not really seen it before. There's probably what used to give James uh, Let's Talk Retro nightmares there. <laughs> there. There are some pretty mad and unsightly things going on in this film. It was a very, very strange film. Yeah, it is Clive Barker, but after all, so... Yeah, I mean, look at that. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, this was... Um, Rich had this up for a fiver. I thought for five pounds, it's, it's an half game, but it's an ocean three-quarter box. Uh, nice to add to the collection. Really, really chuffed to have that. And um, Rich also had P47 on the Spectrum. Now, this isn't on Spectrum Disc. It is on Spectrum Tape. Uh, and he had this up for 15 um, which you may think sounds dear. But I've never, ever seen this before on Spectrum. So um, I was quite chuffed for that. I was quite happy. So as it's still got the 15 left on it, actually. I'll have to remove that in a moment. But so I went to Rich and said, look, I want this and this. You know, what can you do? And Rich said, give us, give us 15 for the pair. And uh, jobs are good. And so I've done that. I said, thanks ever so much, Rich. I'm really chuffed with that. And uh, I bought those. So those were the first two purchases. So we had them up for 20 and we paid 15. So we're happy with that. So really, really cool. Um... And next one I got was from the Liverpudlian lads. Um, this one um, is a really it's a Super Nintendo game, actually. We haven't bought one of those for a while. Uh, and the reason we haven't bought one for a while is the games that I'm after are quite expensive. So um, I'll take this one out. Uh, so basically, well, no, wait, actually, I'll leave it. Um, basically, they had this one up. I went across, so I sort of said to him, right, you know, what do you, what do you want for that game now? Like, what, can you, what can you do me for on it? And he said, uh, well, what are you thinking? What are you thinking, Mike? I said, uh, well, what are you thinking? I said, I don't really want to insult you, like, you know what I mean? He said, <laughs> you know, he said, uh, well, come on, come on, what are you thinking? So I said, right, he said, oh, right. It was up for 75. And I said, look, it's up for 75. I was thinking 60. What, uh... What are you thinking? And so the the uh, the guy the guy with the beard, the Nordic. I like, like thinking. I always wearing a Nordic Viking, like you know. He turns to the other guy, and he says, uh, "What do you think?" And he said, uh, "He said, yeah, I'm all right. As is him. We'll we'll let him have it for that." He goes, "What was you thinking?" He said, "I was thinking I was going to tell him to pee off." <laughs> so we're all having a laugh and all that, and they've done it. Done this game to me for for sixty quid, and it is complete. Um, I've still got the sticker on the box actually here. So uh, it is Adam's fam- Family Values. Uh, now this, I would say, on average on eBay, 
um, is a hundred pound, round about a hundred, hundred plus complete on eBay. Um, so to get this complete in nice condition, I, I won't take it out of the box because it's, uh, but it's a good sort of seven or an eight, I would say, um, with manual all complete. There is a bit of writing in the manual, but to get this for sixty quid when it's 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 around a hundred pound game at the moment now, so I was really really happy. Like I say, these lads always look after me. They're always an absolute pleasure. Um, they're really really cool guys. And if you put a few things together with them, like I say, I've been buying off them ever since I've met the lads. Always bought something off them. I usually put a few bits together and they knock some money off. Like like I say, when I went to Blackpool, I couldn't really find anything I really wanted, but it was a game that I sort of wanted. I wasn't really after, but I always like to you know, buy some off those lads because they always look after me. So, so Adam's Alley Values for 60 quid. So 15 quid knocked off. Really shocked with that. Uh, they've really looked after me there. They didn't have to do that. But like I say, I always do make a point of going and saying hello, having a laugh with the guys. And they are really, really cool guys. Really, really cool. Retro Dojo. If you see the guys, the two Liverpudlian lads, um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, really really cool you you look after them they'll look after you absolutely brilliant i can't thank thank them enough so that is adam sani values wicked really really pleased with that one um now the next one is a game that i wasn't really intending on buying uh i was sort of i'm in an eye and fighting with myself on this one um it's not in the best of condition um though i do believe a disc clean will pretty much sort this out um it also does suffer with the glue bobbling it's a sega saturn game um and this was up for 60 or 70 um i think it was 60 pounds i think if i'm right it might have been 70 um correct me if 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 you know and mr bads will probably know better than me my memory's shot <laughs> so um this was up for i believe it was up for 60 quid um i'm cheeky me i said to the girl there's a girl selling her collection she's moving home um and actually mr bad's got his his pickup from this same girl as well and to be honest her prices are really reasonable um to, but to be if it wouldn't be me without asking for a discount if you don't ask you don't get I did ask and I didn't get, but but the 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 chick was a really cool girl, and uh, you know she sort of said, you know I can't really do it, you know that's the lowest I can go. Um, she said it's it's already reduced to the due to the condition of it, so I was like okay. I said so I said I'm for sixty. I said would you do fifty? She said I I really can't. I said would you do fifty five? She said no no I can't. I said okay I'll go away and have a think about. It. So I've gone away. Um, and a chat with Mr. Bads, and he said, that's a good price, that, Mike. That's, you, you, you're not going to see that for that price. Um, you know, uh, and I said, yes, it's, I'm trying not to spend no pool. I said, but you're not going to see that game at that price, are you? He said, Mike, you're not, you're not going to see that at that price. You better go and buy that, because someone else is going to go and buy it. I'll be surprised if it's still there when you get there. So, right, I'm buying it. That's it, I'm going to buy it. Paul's already... Had his stuff put back with the with with the lady as well. She's a really cool girl, and uh, so I bought this uh, at uh, I believe it's sixty pounds. If it wasn't sixty, it was seventy. But the girl, I'm pretty sure sixty because I remember saying fifty and fifty five. So uh, it is Keto Flying Squadron Two uh, on the Sega Saturn. Uh, the box is probably a a five or a six i'd say um you can see i don't know if you can see on there it's suffering with the like you know got a line of glue there line of glue there so it's got the light the glue thing going on um so you know but to be honest you know it's all complete there's no tears on the box or anything it's all there you know these sega saturn games they don't hold up the best um it has the manual it does have a P wrote there. Now we could probably remove that. I do have an ink remover if I want to be that bothered. Um, so it's all there. The manual's there. Um, you know, it's definitely seen a thumb. It might have even seen a fight. 
But yeah, it's all there. It's not written in or anything. So it's just that P on the front. Um, and the, the disc is in... It's got a lot of surface scratches. Um, I don't know if you see. I don't know if you can see at all. It has a lot of surface scratches, but I'd imagine if you put that through a disc cleaner, um, that would probably come out like brand new. So for 60 quid, I got Kitty Flying Squadron 2. Um, and this sells on eBay at the moment for around... 130 or 140 pounds so like paul said to me he said mike if you play it and you don't like it you could probably sell it straight on for 120 quid so i thought yeah he's talking sense he knows what he's on about and uh so i just a bit the bullet and bought it and and thank you ever so much for that the, the the woman i'm really chuffed i haven't put it on and tried it yet i did ask if it worked and she said it worked the last time she played it so um, yeah, it's only surface scratches. So, like I say, put that through the machine, and uh, or you know, take it to CX and get them to put it through the machine, and uh, we'll be really uh, chuffed with that one. So, Kick of Flies one or two, a game I never really thought I'd end up owning because it's you know 130, 140 quid game to get it for 60 quid, absolute bargain, absolute bargain. So that girl had some really nice pieces as well. Uh, Mr. Bad's picked up off of her. Um, Mr. Bad's almost nearly bought Fantasy Star 2, was it on the Master System? I think she had it for 70 quid. And Mr. Bad's was saying it was a sort of £100 all day long, really. So Or around that sort of price, if, I, if I'm right. So I, I said to him, why don't you just get it and, and, and get it and flip it? And he said, well, he's not really collecting from Master System. And that's not really what he's about, really. So, Which is fair enough, isn't it? So... Um, and right, uh, on to the piece de resistance, the final pickup. So if you can remember right back at the beginning of the video, uh, I said I was chatting to Daisa, and Daisa's a very good friend, uh, and a big man in the spectrum scene apparently, uh, a guy called Ant Harper. Um, really nice guy, like I said, I bought off of him before, and uh, I bought my Super Nintendo off him, and he'd done me a deal. Uh, so I, just, like, the first thing I spotted really uh in the whole event uh, <laughs> you had it for more than what i wanted to pay but it was already a good price to be honest i'm, I'm a i'm a cheeky git me uh you know if i can get days to tell you be the first one to tell you if you catch mike paying full price it's not mike you know so uh so i, I spotted this on his stool and uh i've had a walk around i've had a chat with paul uh mr bads and you know sort of I've got my eye on that. And he said, well, you know, I didn't see it. I said, oh, okay, we'll have a look. So I went across and I said, look, I said to the guy, uh, at the Harper, lovely guy, um, right, what's the crack with this thing? He said, I said, uh, I don't, I don't need, basically, it's, it's a computer. <laughs> I don't need the aerial lead, you know, uh, well, the, God, the cables are, I've got a spell on it, but it's for another machine. The cables, all, all my cables, I, <laughs> all my cables I buy are from Retro Computer Shack. Big up Retro Computer Shack. Um, so I have a Retro Computer Shack cable for this machine. It's not this one. That's that's for another system. It's actually for a master system. That one and Mega Drive. Um, well, which I already have. <laughs> We've got spare. Um, so I already have a Retro Computer Shack cable, which was a package with this. So I don't need that. That was a, they're, they're usually about between 10 and 12 quid. Um, I said, what's the crack with these um, modern power packs? He had a, a modern power pack, which is... Um, let me show you, you probably get the gist of it now. So it's a, it's a power pack like this instead of a big old beast. So, you know. Um, and he said that he wouldn't run them on the older power packs. Um you know, these new modern power packs are stable, a lot more stable than the older power packs, which I've been running mine off the older power pack ever since I've had them, and it's been fine. But, you know, this guy's the, the guy in the know. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. So I thought, OK, I'll leave the power pack in there because if he's saying it's more stable, it's more reliable, then who am I to argue, you know? So uh, the the computer in question is <laughs> a spectrum plus three um 
a Spectrum Plus 3. But in really nice condition. Probably the same condition as mine. Uh, obviously without the dust that comes through with mine. So it's probably the same condition with mine. The difference with uh, this one is, and the reason I bought it, is it is it has been it's had all the work done and it's got everything done so it's recapped uh, the fluffy drive has been serviced uh, edge connectors cleaned soak tested tested working with div x uh, div mmc's uh, modern type power supply rgb uh, scott lead which i've already already got that so um so that was that's all what uh, has been done to it so basically everything i needed to get done on the other ones um, and I believe he said it's had the, the sound fix as well. So uh, everything you can do to this machine has been done to it. So uh, it's uh, it's as good as they get, basically. So I thought, you know, I'm massively into respect for three. I have three of these. So obviously I've promised one of these to old school, which I'm taking up to them this weekend. And I thought I'll take me other ones up and see if... Uh, Alan Harper's interested in buying my ones. Like I say, they're f fully working. They just need a few. They've got a few little quirks and, and, and things, which I'll be honest with him and tell him what, what's right with them, what's wrong with them. Um, but I've got a fully working one now. That's all I need is one fully working one. I've got my Spectrum next on the way. Uh, and, and that's all I need. So I'll, I'll, I'll be off offloading the other two. Um, and, yeah, so I'm really, really chuffed to get that. So uh, Alan Harper's... Uh, company are uh, uh retro dot gear is it retro gear so you see it there uh really cool guy really good bloke and he, he, he'll, he'll look after you you know he's a really good guy so yeah he certainly looked after me and uh i've did the condition of this is uh it really is second to none so it's really really nice so like i said hopefully you know one of the other ones because like i say they're in to get these in nice condition is, is hard nowadays. I mean, mine is cosmetically about the same level as this. Both the ones that are sort of working are the same sort of cosmetic level as this. But like I say, they need, um, you know, they need the uh, you know, best thing to do with them is to recap them and do all the work. And and, he, and he's the guy that can do all the work. If he's not interested in buying them, I might get him maybe to do the work and selling them on myself. Because once all the work's done to them, uh, they fetch quite strong money. They fetch strong money without... You know, I I paid, I paid every odds for mine. I, but but uh, I've had them with the boxes, and I'm probably going to keep the boxes. I think, so I might let one box go. Uh, I'm not sure yet. So getting all my bags ready anyway to go to old schools and do do revival. Um, got 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 uh, a few pickups from the lads, a few purchases that the lads have bought off me and things. Uh, a few gifts and trades and whatever we'll take with us. Um, and yeah, so really looking forward to that. Um, and like I say, Revival this weekend, uh, Ruby Murray at Old Schools, and uh, Revival. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. Uh, another fantastic weekend. No doubt we're going to be paying for it all next week. And uh, <laughs> headache, too much drinking, you know how it is. Uh, so you're going to see Cindy Steve up there. I think he's got a few nice bits and pieces uh, for sale and trade as well, he's taken along. Um, and uh, uh, hopefully another fantastic weekend had. So... Alright, uh, YouTube, like, comment, share and subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Cheers.